Welcome to part four of building the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. In this episode, we are building the Enraged Rabbit Cottontail, which is a buffer for the ECRF V2. And be prepared for a lot of printing. But once you're done, you can start. The parts for the Cottontail buffering system come within the Seabor Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder V2 kit. And that is the kit I am using for this build. And it, when we're done, it should look something like this. So to prep these support arms, we need to insert our heat set inserts. Um, here I have um, one of the reels that I 3D printed that, well, actually the print failed. <laughs> so I'm not too worried if I damage it here. I have no intention of using it. But it works as a pretty good support stand to help insert these heat set inserts. Next, take one of the support arm mounts, and this one will get this heat set insert, and then sit this one aside. This is the one that's going to mount at the very end or on the last support arm that the controller box is going to connect to a little bit later. So this one is special. Set it aside for last. For the ending arm with the control box, notice here I had this lift off the bed when it was printing, but it didn't cause enough damage where, well, I can use it as is, so I'm going to use it. I hate to throw these out. And so we just need to insert the four heat set inserts, which will be used to uh, tighten down the MCU, the Big Tree Tech MCU controller card. Next, we install the control arm mounts, and they will simply slide in place. Next, we prep the buffer wheels with the bearings, and these should simply insert in. They might require a little bit of persuasion, um, but they you do want to make sure they're all the way in. Next, you want to install all the couplers in the coupler blocks. I will save you from having to watch me do this. I'm assuming at this point in time, you're probably a pro on this anyway. Next, we need to cut the PTFE tubing for the coupler blocks. Make sure you choose the one with the largest internal diameter. And then assuming you 3D printed the trimming tool, as you can see, the tubing fits right in and there's a little slot here that you can use to cut it. I'm using a utility knife and if you push too hard, <laughs> You'll probably break it, as I'm about to do. Um, found it a little bit challenging to get the tube out, but even though I broke the tool, it'll work just fine. And again, PTFE tubing is uh, a little slippery, <laughs> but with some persuasion, it does come out. Then go ahead and cut one for every coupler block. And again, I'm going to speed this up because this is really not interesting. Once you're done, insert the coupler tubes into the coupler blocks with the curve facing downward and do them all.
Next, we need to install the filament sensors for the coupler blocks. This just involves installing the ball bearing into the hole for it and then screwing on the micro switch. I don't know if it's safe to pull these micro switches out of this carrier. Um, it looks like they're soldered in, but at the same time, it also kind of looks like they're pressed in, so I'm not sure. So to be on the safe side here, I'm leaving these all connected for better or for worse. And here I'm just screwing this in. It's best to use, do this by hand and not use an electric screwdriver. If you do, make sure you have it on the lightest setting because if you strip these, you're probably going to have to reprint the block and reassemble it. Uh, with the press fit and everything else, it's not going to be easy. It's probably best to tighten these by hand. So here I'm using a piece of filament uh, to test what I've just assembled. You should be able to hear the micro switch click and the filament should move in and out smoothly. And then I went ahead and did the rest of these. If you know of an easier way to assemble this without having to attach all of these first, please add a comment down below. Thank you. So here I am assembling all of this. It's a little bit tricky because these coupler blocks lock in to a specific spot and everything interlocks together here. And you've got the micro switches connected to this flexible circuit board. And so it's a little bit tricky, um, but with some patience, it took some time. Again, if you have a better way of doing this, please add down below in the comments. I'm sure others could learn um, from your experience. Here you can see I've installed the T-nuts and the ERCF, and this is going to attach like so. And here I'm installing all the M3 by 8 bolts, and just making sure these are tight. I install them somewhat loose, because you do have to adjust the T-nuts a bit to make sure this all aligns nicely. Um, but once it's all aligned, tighten it down. Notice so far, on this, on the cotton tail, or the rabbit feeder. I have not installed any of the LED lighting. I'm going to do that a little bit later when I do all the electronics. Turns out there's a little bit of a challenge and I'm just trying to decide the best way to do this, but there's only one connector on the controller and multiple strings of LEDs. Here I'm going through and I'm making sure I'm pushing the compression couplers to make sure the PTFE tubing is all um, properly connected as well. And so I'm just using this plier to push these down and then make sure the PTFE tube, which is a little bit compressed right now, pops in properly. Next, we need to mount the circuit board holder and the end plate, the final plate. And uh, this is pretty simple. Just screw in the board. This plate is also the final uh, arm control cover. 
And so we need to get this one screw in as well to finish tightening this all up. Next, we need to screw all these plates together. Um, each one screws into the other with these M3 by eight screws. This will greatly stiffen up the whole structure and also align these. Um, it, <laughs> there are multiple rows of these, so make sure you get them all. Um, it's not just one side. If you found this video useful, please click subscribe and stay tuned for the following video where we'll cover the electronics.